Welcome back everybody and in this video we are going to start looking at switch and case statements. Okay, so welcome along and um, I hope you enjoy this um, the video and that you find it useful. So just in terms of our notes uh, for this lesson, um, we've got a little bit, um, a few notes here uh, just outlining um, switch statements, sometimes called switch and case statements. Um, so um, the best way to demonstrate this is really just by through example. Um, so a switch statement is sometimes useful creating what's called a multi-way branch, a bit like an if statement. Um, so um, a time when you might want to use um, a switch statement might be if you are displaying some kind of menu, some kind of list of options uh, to your users. Um, so the menu item or each menu item um, on the list that you display can potentially display a list of options and your code will respond differently or you can make your code respond differently depending on the user inputs. Also, if um, switch statements uh, can be quite useful. I find personally, if you find your if statements becoming a bit long um, and cumbersome, um, maybe if you're finding your if statements are becoming a little bit long-winded, it might be worth considering using an F, sorry, a case statement, switch case statement and say instead as they can be a little bit more concise. And in this example, we're going to look at using a case statement for building up um, a simple currency converter style program uh, with uh, Java. So um, what I have here is the general outline of a switch statement. Um, what we'll be doing in this example is asking for the user to enter in a numerical input, uh, which is going to be um, a value of a certain amount of currency in pounds. Um, and, based, and then we'll display a menu to the user with some options basically um, what currency that they would like to convert the pounds into. So we're going to use dollars, euros and yen, okay, in our example. So feel free to use other examples if you're trying this um, at home. I just had a quick look online to see what the current currency conversions are today. Um, so obviously these do change. Um, you may wish to use the most up-to-date uh, currency conversions in your own program and we're going to use some case statements so switch and case statements uh, to handle this so first thing that we're going to do is scroll down slightly remember to like comment and subscribe um, for more of these videos um, love to hear from you all in the comments so feel free to drop me a comment or say hello if you're finding these videos um, useful so i know that i'm going to be using the scanner class um, in this project. So we'll just go ahead and import the scanner class. So import java.util um, scanner. So we'll import the Java scanner. So um, as you know, this imports the scanner um, class into your project and allows you to make use of the scanner for some basic user input via the console. So we've imported that. The other thing that we'll do um, while we're dealing with the scanner is to initialize the scanner, okay, in our code. So we'll just say scanner, scanner equals new scanner. So you'll know that if you've been following along, that this creates a new instance of the scanner class in system memory ready for us to use. So effectively what you've done here is initialized this scanner. I'll add some comments to this code um, before we finish. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll display, well, we'll ask the user to enter in um, the amount of pounds um, that they wish to convert. So what we'll say is we'll create a variable. It will be a double variable we'll use just now. So we'll say double um, and we'll call this GBG. Okay, so that's short for um, pounds Great Britain, Great British Pounds. Um, and we'll close that off there. Okay, so we'll just call this GBP. I'm going to call it GBP amounts. Okay, just to make that slightly um, more clear, um, just in the code there. So this is the amount of pounds. Pounds entered. Okay, so this is the amount that the user wishes to convert. So it could be one pound, two pounds, whatever, whatever amount they wish to to enter. Okay, so we'll capture this now. And what we'll say to the user is we'll say we'll just do a system out. So system out prints line, and we'll say um, 
display a greeting. We'll say welcome to the currency currency converter. Okay, and we'll say please enter enter the value in pounds. Okay, so effectively the amount that they wish to um, convert. Okay, so we'll just prompt them for um, entering in the value in pounds. Okay, um, and we'll capture that. So we'll say um, GBP amount is equal to the next thing that they enter in the scanner, which is hopefully the value of the uh, amount of money in pounds that they wish to convert. And um, there we go. So next up, we will display um, our menu to the user. So we'll say system out, print line, and we'll say this one for dollars. Okay, so press one for US dollars. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll put a line break in there and we'll say press two for euros and we'll say press three for yen. Okay. There we go. So we've um, displayed the menu there to our users. Okay, so press one for dollars, press two for euros, and press three for yen. And what we want to do next is we want to capture that um, as the user's choice. Okay, so we'll um, um, what I'll do here is I will just declare another variable uh, just up here in my code called user choice just to capture um, the amount they wish to, or not the amount, the, their, their choice, okay, whether they're entering in one, two, or three, okay. Store user choice, okay. And um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll capture that from the scanner. So we'll say user choice is equal to scanner, and it's an integer, so next, uh, next int, next integer entered in, in the scanner will be, um, will be stored in the user choice variable. Okay, now what we'll do now is we will code up our switch statements. Okay, so for the switch statements, um, it is switch um, and then we open up our condition. Um, so what we can say is we can switch. Okay, and the thing, the item that we're using um, or the item that we're evaluating as part of the switch is the user choice. Okay, in other words, whether they've entered in one, two, or three. Okay, and then we open our first case. Okay, so the first case, so in the event that the person keys in a one, okay, um, we'll do this. Okay, so if they enter in a one, um, we'll do this. So if the, if the case is that they enter in a one, okay, so in other words, they want to convert pounds into US dollars, um, we can, um, yeah, we can, um, yeah, we can display a result. So we could just say something like um, uh, system out print line. And we could say something like um, the amount in dollars is, and we can even put in the dollar symbol. And what I'm just going to do here, probably other ways you could do this, but I'm just going to pop in the um, calculation just in the, uh, yeah, just in the um, output there. So we'll just do that. What I'll do is I'm just going to create a new variable called dollars. Okay. And we'll say that dollars is equal to GBP amounts multiplied by, and at the moment, 125. Okay, so there's 125 dollars to the pound. Okay, so dollars times 125. Okay, and then we can print that back out to the user. Dollars. So that is dollars, the amount in dollars. Okay, the other thing um, is that um, we can have 
um, a default when we're using a, a case statements, okay? And a default is used in case uh, none of the cases match. So what I'll do is before I do the default, I'll just code up the other cases. Okay, so we'll have um, case two. Okay, so case two. Okay, and I'm just gonna fix this. Okay, um, so case two is going to be euros. Okay, so euros, euros. And euros are one euro 17 to the pound. Okay, 117 to the pound. And um, yeah, so we'll print that back out in euros. Euros, okay. And we'll just use the little euros operator. And we'll just pop that in there. And we'll have a third case statement. Okay, so case three. And this is going to be yen. Okay, and for yen, um, it is 184.44. Okay, we'll just pop that in here. Maybe some rounding, you can do rounding as well. Um, so um, we'll just um, see how this operates. Okay, so that's the amount in yen. We'll say yen, euros, and uh, dollars. Okay mentioned uh, a little while ago that in addition to so what happens if if, if the person does not choose one two or three um, well what we can do is we can actually display an error we can do a default okay so we can say default so this is basically if none of the other cases match okay so if none of the cases match so they don't enter in one two or three they basically enter in anything else so what we can do here is just an error message system out print line and we can say um, error detected please enter one two or three okay and uh, yeah I think that's probably um, that's probably about it so if none of the cases match you can actually display um, an error okay so let's um, have a look at um, yeah so let's run this program and we'll see how things are operating so we'll just run this in the console and we'll see what happens. So, okay, so, so far so good. Um, we have, okay, so we have system out print line, welcome to the currency converter. Please enter your the value of the basically the amount that they want to convert in pounds. Okay, so if we enter in, for example, 10 pounds, okay. And next we'll be asked for um, whether we want to choose US dollars, euros, or yen, basically one, two, or three. Okay, so this is our case statement in action here. So let's go for dollars, first of all. Okay, and the amount in dollars is $12.50. Um, okay, so um, we can also test that. We'll need to run it again, okay, to test out the other um, options. Okay, so let's try something else. So 14 pounds. Okay, we'll go for euros. Okay, it's the amount is equivalent to 16 euros 38. And we can also try the example with yen. Okay, so let's go for, yeah, just a completely different amount again. Let's go for something a bit more specific, 17 pounds 45 pence in yen. So if we go for option three, so the amount in yen is, and there we have it, 3,218 with um, a lot of uh, digits after the decimal place. So you could round this um, if you wanted to, um, and you can check out my video about rounding to two, two decimal places, um, that, which shows you how to do that. Now, the is also the default, which we can test out. So this is if none of the cases match. So let's go for just another amount there in pounds, okay? And so if we type in just anything else, um, seven, for example, um, we've got an error detected. Please enter one, two, or three. And if you were doing modular, modular coding, which we will le be learning about soon, you could actually jump back to the start again and display um, the menu once again, or just say something like, error detected, please enter one, two, or three. Please press any key to continue, and you could jump back to the menu. But we'll be covering modular code in uh, future 
videos. Okay, so there we have it. Um, we have, a, yeah, just a, just a basic uh, example there of a switch in case statement. Um, as always, quite useful for, you know, any time when you, um, you know, any time, just an alternative to an if statement um, can be a little bit more concise. Um, good for things like menus, um, just when you want to offer uh, your users different choices. Definitely worth considering, especially if you do find that your, your if statements become a little bit long-winded, maybe a bit cumbersome, difficult to work with, um, the switch case statement can offer um, a good alternative to that. Okay, so thank you for watching. Um, yep, uh, try this out, keep practicing. Um, and once again, thanks again. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, yeah, comment and um, yeah, and we'll see you again very soon. So thanks again and bye for now.